Hey y'all, Sai here. It's time for another episode of OPP. And guess what? I have some guests with me. I have Ella. Ah! I also have husband. I was gonna call him grandpa. And Gibby. And I have Noah. Yo! And Nadine's here too! So I had left my computer at my son's house, and on my computer was most of my OPP stuff. So when the kids came for Grandkids Week, I didn't have all of the information for all of the people for OPP. So I'm going to be taking filming that I'm doing right now, and then I'm going to mix it together with the filming that I did while the kids were here. Yes! So this first couple of projects I'm going to share are from Lori Scott. She made a couple of hand routered signs for some friends of hers that had some of their beloved puppy dogs pass away recently. She made one for a dog named Zoe and one for a dog named Willie. And she hand routered it. She put a deep chamfer on the front and then she put a more shallow chamfer on the back side. She mentioned that she's gonna stop doing projects for a little while because the summertime is so hot that she can't put finishes on her, on her projects. She has to wait till it's like winter time when it's uh, cool enough to put finishes on. And it made me think, wow, you know, to live in Arizona and to, to, be, um, to have the weather be so that it, you can't do that. And I know it's been super hot this summer. So I hope everything is doing okay over there in Arizona and for everybody else that lives in Arizona. Those are beautiful signs, Lori, and I bet your friends are very appreciative of it. Thanks for sharing them with us. For our next project, we have a drawing done by Teresa, which is my grandma's cousin. She did a line drawing with coloring pencils, and I'm very impressed with how detailed and how realistic it looks because I know that takes a lot of patience. Great job, Teresa. Thanks for sharing. The next project is from John Boone, and he took a 59-gallon unfinished oak barrel and he changed it into a pub table with an umbrella. What he did was he took the center rings off and he, he sanded the barrel and then he put um, min wax espresso wood stain on it and he put three coats of polyurethane over the top of that. And then after a thing was set up, then he put the rings back on after you painted them and he put a hole in the center and then he added the, the umbrella to it. And I think it looks great. He also put little rubber feet on it to make it stand up just enough so moisture won't get on it. So very good, John. Thanks for sharing that with us. This next project is by Phil Gavin. He has made a Christmas reindeer. The woods that he used are oak, beech, Ebony, Wenge, Paduk, and Sapelli. These next projects are from Joaquin Cruz Garzon, and he doesn't give me much information about these, but they are bandsaw jewelry boxes. And he has four of them. And it looks like some of them have like a felt inside and some of them don't. But thank you so much for sharing those with us. They look awesome. This next one is by Tom Antrim. He sent us not one, not two, but four intarsias. He made this scarecrow. He made this bird. He made this barn. And he just added in, he made another barn just for good measure. And then he used an assortment of types of wood, which we unfortunately don't know what they are. However, I just thought it was cool that he used multiple different types. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, Tom. I really like the bird. Anyways, see ya. And Nadine had talked about Teresa a little bit, but I have a few more drawings from Teresa. And she did this drawing of this Maltese. She said it was an 18-year-old dog that had passed away. And her husband, who's my cousin, uh, worked with the lady who had the dog that passed away. So Teresa made this drawing for her, and wow, it's awesome. Two more of her drawings have made it into the online gallery, the tiger and the lion. She also drew up this mountain scene. And the last drawing that Teresa showed me is this kitty cat. 
and she said it's her son's kitty cat which is another cousin of mine <laughs> oh my cousins yay and the cat's name is marmalade thanks so much for sharing all of your drawings with us teresa we love to see them this next project is by Claudio Nestor Rodriguez, and this is an intarsia dog that he made. He said he made this after a dog of theirs that also passed away. Wow, we're hearing about a bunch of dogs that have been passing away. Whoa. But he, he said the dog left them with a bunch of fond memories. So that's really cool, Claudio, that you made this dog. And Claudio also has a YouTube video of him making this dog, I believe. So thanks so much for sharing that with us, Claudio, and I'll put a link down in the description below with a link to that video. Hi, this is Stan, who's also known as hubby or husband or grandpa in this case with my grandkids. This next project is from Kurt Tuttle and it's a fountain and it's made from a pickle container and then some rocks came from lawn care and he got a whole bunch from his wife and also his grandkids and they painted them and these are the leftovers. And on the top, there's about two dozen small holes so the water drains back into the barrel. And it took longer for the paint to dry than for anything else to be made. Anyways, this is all done by Kurt Tuttle and it was a fountain. Husband got a little bit off track and got a little bit crazy. So I'm putting that at the end with the blooper reel. So I wanted to say thank you very much for sharing that with us, Kurt. This next project is from Melanie Boone and she carved this otter. She started off with a block of basswood and she used the bandsaw to like cut it down and then she used a dremel for a lot of it and then she hand carved a lot of it. She said she used acrylic paint for the different variations in the coloring and then she coated it all with polyacrylic. She used some fishing line for the whiskers. She painted the eyes with a glossy paint and she said that it makes a highlight in there and when you move back and forth, that highlight moves around, which is pretty cool. She mounted him with a riverside environment on a turntable. She found this pattern in a wood carving magazine that Fox Chapel prints, but she couldn't remember the name of the magazine for sure. But she put him in the county fair and she won a blue ribbon. So good job, Mel. What an excellent job. Thanks for sharing that with us. This next project is from Ron Borman, and he's our missionary friend that lives down in Ecuador. This is a chess set that he made, and he said he used a chainsaw to carve those pieces. Like, whoa, crazy. But he also said that the name of the wood is Red Sandy Roja, and he said you have to roll the H. Roja. Anyway, I don't know how to say that, but Roja. <laughs> anyway, the white wood color is copal, which is pretty common down in Ecuador, he says. He said he put plywood on the bottom of it to make it nice and sturdy. He finished it with some spray varnish, and then Sarah, his daughter, made some bags to put the pieces into. He says that Sarah also helped with sanding. And so they put both of their initials wood burned onto the back of the project. What a beautiful chessboard this is. And I just love that you made those pieces with the chainsaws. Like, wow, they look so awesome. So thanks so much for sharing that with us, Ron and Sarah. I have one more project from Phil Gavin. Ella presented Phil Gavin's reindeer earlier. He also sent in a weather gauge that he made. So he bought this weather gauge and it had two gauges on it. And he took it all apart and he made a new weather station and with three different gauges in it. He said he bought a piece of solid oak and a hygro hygrometer, and it took him nine months to find a drill for the hygrometer so he could drill the correct size to fit it in there. He said he didn't want to mess it up, so he looked and looked and looked until he found the right drill bit. He also put a 0.3 millimeter brass edging around the entire thing. He said the borders were from Steve Good, and I'm not sure what he, what he means by that, but um, anyway, part of this is from a Steve Good design. He said that he also finished everything with beeswax. So thanks so much for sharing that, Phil Gavin, and along with your reindeer. These next couple of projects are from Jim Merrow. This first one is this lab intarsia slash segmentation. He said that he was doing this piece as a practice piece, and wow, it's... Looks great, Jim. 
He said this is a pattern by Judy Gale Roberts, but he said he got it out of the Scroll Saw Woodcraft magazine of summer of 2023. So just recently. He made this piece out of poplar, walnut, holly, and dark western red cedar. Fantastic, Jim. He also got a pattern out of the Scroll Saw Woodworking and Crafts magazine, which is this witch. He said he used Peruvian walnut for the hat, mineral poplar for the face, and Peruvian walnut for the eyes, and the hair is spalted maple. He used a few raising shims to lift up the nose and the chin and the mouth and that wart, just to give it a lot of dimension. This is not a Judy Gale Roberts pattern, but he reached out to Judy to ask her for some help on shaping, and she gave him some great tips using the Wonder Wheel and the sander around the nose and things. Isn't that awesome? Just love this Intarja community. Jim also made this fluke, which is a pattern by Jeanette Square, and this comes from her brand new book she has out. He said he used cedar for the tail, and they used rainbow poplar, which I'd never heard of that before, for the water. And he said he liked that because the red highlights in the water matches the tail, and I would say, yeah, it does, it looks great. And then he also made this starfish, and he used zebra wood and aspen. He said he modified the pattern a little bit because he wanted the tips of the starfish to curl. And so that's pretty cool, Jim. And this last project of, that Jim shared with me is, he called it a conch, and I call it a shell, but I guess it's a conch shell, I don't know. But he made it out of spalted maple, and it's very, very dimensional. And this pattern is something that he created on his own. So this is a Jim Merrill pattern. Ah, so cool. And he said it's, it, the piece is 12 inches long, so it's a good sized piece. So thanks for sharing those, Jim, and I, I love that you made your own pattern. Wow, and if I remember right, you made a pattern before. That it was feathers, I think. Anyway, wow, I look forward to more of your patterns. Yeah, so thanks so much for sharing those with us. These next couple of projects are from Humphrey Dunn, and this first one is a dream catcher, and the pattern is by Sirhan. And he has an Etsy page called Chippily Wood, where you can get patterns. Humphrey said that he also learned how to weave a dream catcher when he made this project. And the, the feathers were going to be regular feathers in the project, but he made them out of wood since it was an intarsia. He was like, I'll just make the feathers out of wood too. But he said the ring, the ring has some words around it. And he, he believes that they say, may the great spirit be with you. He said he used 23 different species of wood in this project, and he said that he is not going to um, make me read them all. But he didn't even tell me what they were, so uh -oh, I won't read them all. But that's awesome, 23. And he said that's the most he's used in a project so far. And wow, Humphrey, it looks fantastic. And the next one from Humphrey is this dragon. It is a Bruce Worthington pattern. We all know that Bruce passed away a couple months ago, and so I was very glad that Humphrey and Alan and I got together and we each made one of these dragons and we posted it um, just to tell Bruce how much we appreciate him. So I was glad we did that when we did. Humphrey says he put his on top of a column in his house and that's where it's going to live, and he used Paduk, Lati, Aspen, Poplar, Wenge, and Peruvian Walnut. Awesome, Humphrey! Thank you so much for sharing those with us. This last project is from Max Reed. And Max has a few different things he's made here. So this first one, and uh, this has a story along with it, and I asked Max, I, wa I wasn't gonna share the story, but Max is like, go ahead, share the story. That's okay. He said, nobody's gonna see this video that, that, that will be bothered by hearing what, <laughs> what he had to say. So. This first project here is a Judy Gale Roberts pattern that he modified. He said he put in a second chair and then he's making it for his sister-in-law who doesn't like him and he doesn't like her. So he went out of his perfection mode and got a little bit sloppy in a couple spots. And he said um, he didn't care and he actually put mistakes in on purpose. And then he added a crab and he said that a crab for a crab, and yeah. He used blue pine, walnut, maple, aspen, some cedar, 
And he says he can't remember the rest of the woods, but he said after he finished that in Tarja that he had to go out somewhere and find some clean air in the mountains just to get his brain cleared of uh, the unhappy thoughts while he's making it in Tarja. <laughs> so, Max, even though you were in that kind of mode making the Intarja, what a beautiful piece you made. And as far as the mistakes, they're not very obvious. They're not obvious at all. Maybe your sister-in-law will like you now. <laughs> this next project that he did is another Judy Gale Roberts pattern. He made this one for his wife. He said this house reminds his wife of her grandmother's house in Arizona. So it's real special for his wife. He used aspen, cedar, blue stained pine, walnut, and a few others. I like that you didn't add any mistakes in that one for her. And this very last piece from Max is a horse and roper intarsia, and this is a Kathy Wise pattern. He said he found it in a book about intarsia. He said the horse is Spanish cedar, the calf is dark walnut, and then he says there is more walnut, cedar, aspen, basswood, and he's not sure of the other woods, but wow, it's another awesome one, Max. Woo! Those are lots of pieces too. So thank you so much for sharing those with us. Okay, now we can go back to the outro with everybody. Thank you everybody for joining us for this episode of OPP. And if you have anything you want me to share, just send me an email with a heading that says OPP. And Bye. We'll see you Bye. next time. Bye. Bye. So now I'm going to show all of our bloopers that we did as we were trying to film this. And like always, we have a bunch of fun. So thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for coming. I try it again. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> Never do that or else. Do. Bum, bum, bum. Fair walk. And, when, and if you feel like you want to start over, just start over. Is it going now? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. For the next project, we have Teresa. What? Place. Stop. You know, talk. We're stopping you because you're also grandpa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have listed all those names and you yeah. forgot like the most important okay. one. Paduk. And Sapelli. You can also say There's that, there's that, there's that, there's that. Sandy Rohar. <laughs> <laughs>